Hi everyone, I welcome you back with another video on our AWS uh, Begin with Basics series. In this Begin with Basics series, we're going to start working on the hybrid connectivity part on your AWS Cloud Platform. By now, we know how to create a virtual machine that is your EC2 in AWS. Also, we know how to create different components like storage, your virtual private cloud, your subnets. And we also know how to run our basic applications on AWS Cloud. Now, the very critical ask is how to connect to these workloads securely from different locations. Now, these locations can be your on-prem data center, maybe your branch office where you have got 20, 25 users or the end users who might be working from different locations. For all these scenarios, we have certain services which we can use like for the on-prem to AWS platform connectivity, we have something called Direct Connect. Then for the branch offices or the offices where we have 20 to 20 to 25, 30 users, we can use something to call something called site to site VPN. And for the remote end users, which might be working from various locations, including home or home offices, we can use AWS client VPN, which you can enable by running an open VPN based client on their laptop desktops. So my dear friends, in today's video, we're going to learn more about AWS Client VPN, the hybrid connectivity to Amazon Virtual Private Cloud. In this video, we're going to see what it is. I mean, what the AWS Client VPN is. Then we will know, uh, as you understand that we normally start giving a solid explanation of the basics. So we'll start talking about what all the components which acts in the backend to create this AWS client VPN service and how do they interact with each other. Then after that, I'll quickly walk you through the demo architecture as well as the, the task which we're going to perform during the demo. And once it is done, we will jump into the AWS management console and we'll configure the client VPN step by step. Once it is done, things are not finished yet. So you need to stay with me for a bit longer. Once it is done, We'll discuss AWS client VPN limitations and some very important considerations or rules which you might want to call them. These conditions, considerations and the limitations can be a very quick pointer for your next interview or for your upcoming solutions architect exam. So let's begin guys. So what is AWS client VPN? As I said, it's a managed VPN or the client based VPN service which basically help our remote users so that they can connect to the AWS virtual private cloud to securely access your AWS resources. Now this is the service. What all its features are? First of all, let's talk about the authentication part. I mean the very first step is the authentication. So your client AWS client VPN service supports three different types of authentication out of which two are user based and one is certificate based and the one which which is certificate based we are going to try out in our demo today. So in the user base we have Active Directory and we have SSO or the single sign on SAML based federation and for certificate based we have something called mutual authentication. So once authentication is done the next part comes in authorization. So for the authorization Either you can control authorization through security groups, which is a kind of a important component of our virtual private cloud or VPCs, as well as we have something called authorization rule, which we're going to see in today's demo. You can have this network based authorizations as well. Once that is done, this AWS client VPN service is highly available and elastic. It will automatically scale to the number of users. And just to give you a hint of it, it can support up to 7000 users per subnet i mean if you have uh, associated one subnet with it it will be able to support 7000 and if you do two subnets it the number of concurrent users can be increased to 16500 as well so you can see it's highly scalable and and the scaling part happens if it's own that's the biggest uh, benefit you get you need not to worry about to increase anything in the back end so this is how it's highly available and elastic as well. Now let's quickly see what all its component which help us to make it work. The first component is your uh, networking part that is your virtual private cloud which is going to be kind of a target network for it and which will have multiple subnets into it. Then we'll have AWS 
client VPN endpoint and this is the resource which you're going to create and configure uh, to enable the client VPN sessions. Basically, it's going to be the termination point for all your VPN connections or VPN sessions. After that, you'll see something called client VPN network interface. So the first thing is target network. So here you have two components. One is your target network and one is your client VPN network interface. So once you create this client VPN endpoint and you associate with the subnet in this VPC, that subnet becomes the target network. And once you get the target network, in within the target network, AWS will create something called client VPN network interface. All the traffic which is going to be sent from AWS client VPN endpoint will be talking to their resources through this client VPN network interface. So basically the client will connect to the endpoint and from endpoint all these things, the traffic will flow through this VPN network interface. So here you will see uh, SNAT will come into the picture where the source IP address from the client CIDR range which we will gonna see later will be translated to the client VPN network interface. Now and during um, before we move further I'll just go back a step. When we associate a target network, this target network network will have subnets. Now, this subnet can be single subnet or you can have or you can associate multiple subnets as well. But these multiple subnets should be part of the same VPC. They cannot be part of the different VPC and they should be from a different availability zone. So that's how the target network works. Now we will have something called route table. Route table will contain the uh, routing part of it, which will help your network traffic to flow. Once your uh, traffic come from the client, it hits the client endpoint. These route tables, which will basically be copied the client as well, will let will let the client know to which path traffic is going to flow. Then we have something called authorization rule. This is part of the authorization which we spoke about earlier. The authorization rule basically allow users to access the uh, VPN services. By default, all the access are disabled. So you need to basically specifically allow. So once once we once we create this client VPN endpoint, then we have this target network, we have authorization rule, we have route table setup. Then we need one while setting up this client endpoint, you will something come across which is called CI direct uh, range for the client. So basically, this is an IP address from where it, the IPs to the client will be assigned. And then the component uh, uh, one of the component is the end user itself who is gonna need a client VPN configuration which will which you would download once this uh, all the setup is done there will be a client configuration file which you need to download from the uh, AWS management console also download the client for uh, your laptops and desktop you can have different clients for your uh, Mac, Linux or Windows based operating system and then you need to install on the client's uh, machines and once that is done you will need this uh, you will use this client client VPN configuration file to create a profile and once profile is done you can start having the connectivity through these uh, of these clients through client VPN endpoint to the client VPN network interface. So these are the components which work together to give you an end-to-end -end connectivity for your clients. Now let's quickly walk you through the demo which we're going to do today. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to create a VPC with two subnets, subnet 1 and subnet 2. And uh, please remember that we are not going to create an internet gateway because we're going to use this client VPN endpoint for our clients to give the connectivity and we're not connecting uh, these things to internet further. Then in subnet 2, we will create the target server. This is going to be a Windows virtual machine and because this is a Windows virtual machine, we're going to keep our RDP 3389 open and ICMP open. In subnet 01, we're going to, uh, this is going to be our target uh, network. But before that happens, we will create something called server and client certificates because we are going to use mutual authentication. Mutual authentication will require server and the client certificates. So once you create those certificates, those certificates would be uploaded to AWS Certificate Manager or ACM. And then you create this client VPN endpoint and provide that uh, ACM ERN as a source of your authentication. Once that is done, you you uh, you finish creating your client VPN endpoint, then we will attach uh, subnet 01 as a target network. After that, we will create authorization rule 
also we will update the route table and here we're going to use split routing uh, which we'll see what uh, we're going to see what it is once that is done we'll download the vpn client as well as the client configuration file and install it on our client and then we will initiate the connectivity once the connectivity happens we will try to have an rdp and remember guys this is this is a machine which is going to have uh, no public ip so you will see that how we can how it it works when the uh, and the vpn session started so let's jump to the aws management console and start configuring things okay guys so now we are in our aws management console so we'll start configuring things here so first of all let's create vpc and two subnets as we saw in the demo architecture so i'm gonna create a quick vpc without internet gateway create vpc only vpc i'm gonna give it a name this is going to be the name of my vpc i'm calling it client vpn demo so here it is i'm just uh this is the range i'm gonna give so i'm gonna keep it 10.1.0.1 dot dot zero dot zero and let's say go for a 16. i don't want ip6 as of now default tenancy no tags the naming should be good enough create a vpc quickly now once it is done let's go to the subnets and these are my default ones now quickly create two subnets for this purpose i'm going to select my client vpn demo uh, the subnet the first subnet is going to be my subnet 01 and this is the subnet where i'm going to attach it as a kind of a target network i'm going to specifically call out that i need one a as an availability zone this is my ip range so i'm going to keep it my uh, this is my ip uh, for vpc range for my subnet cidr block i'm going to pick 10.1.1 dot zero slash 24 this is gonna keep i'm gonna keep for that and click on and i'm gonna click the another one as well subnet 2 so i'm gonna call it subnet 02 i'm gonna make it 1b keep the same vpc range change the subnet range 10.1 dot dot let's call it 3.0 this is where this is basically where i'm gonna create my windows virtual machine which is going to be my target server and that's it gonna click create subnet so it's quickly created now in the meantime let's quickly go and create our vm as well so i'm gonna go to the ec2 EC <clears throat> currently there's no instances running i'm gonna i'll show you so there's nothing i'm gonna launch instances i'm gonna pick uh, windows vm because we're gonna uh, demonstrate it through an rdp so I'm going to call it target server VPN and I'm going to go for windows and let's say take 2016 base should be good enough. I'm going to stick to the free tier guys and you also if you don't want to spend money on this uh, demonstration while you're testing out in your own lab. So I'm going to stick with T2 micro. This is going to be my key. and network settings i'm going to edit it i'm going to use my client vpn as a vpc and i'm going to keep it in subnet 02 uh, there is no auto assignment because uh, my vpc is not capable of doing it security group we're gonna quickly create a security group i'm going to call it vpn sg rdp is allowed i'm gonna anywhere i'm just gonna just keep it there so that's it uh, this is what we're gonna do i would add one rule for icmp as well so this is my all icmp traffic from anywhere and that's it i'm gonna launch this instance so let's wait for a couple of seconds uh, when the instance is ready now in the meantime let's go back to our uh, clients so uh, basically we now we need to create that server and the client certificate let's start doing that so for creating that uh, certificates i'm going to use easy rsa uh, open vpn uh, utility uh, the to download the utility this is the link from there you can download it so 
I'm, I have downloaded this 317 Windows 64 version, so it's already downloaded. Now let's go to the command, uh, command, line, command line or the CLI uh, where we need to run few commands to create our server certificate and the client certificates. So I'm just open the command line tool for you. I need to reach to the place where basically the files are kept. So if you look at it here, I have already downloaded and kept it under C drive and this is my folder, right? So let's go back and go there. So now if I just, once we are into the, uh, let's move to the, the drive, uh, I mean the folder which we downloaded from EZRSA GitHub uh, portal. Once we are there, we need to run few commands. Let's say this is easy RSA start dot bat. So now basically running a batch file to prepare the environment. So we are into that uh, easy RSS shell now. Let's initiate the PKI. So this is where it is initiating. Now you can create a CA. So now we're going to create a certificate authority without I'm using a no pass as a So this is going to be my easy RSA build CA no pass. Let's call it server. Okay, now let's create the server certificate and the server key again. Easy RSA build server on the full server full server again no password so it's gonna create our server and uh, certificate and the key I said yes now let's quickly create the client certificate as well in the same way build client full client one dot domain all these uh, instructions you can get from the documentation as well all the, I'm gonna put all these commands in the description in the video below again no password yes so now we have created server and the client certificate and their uh, assigned keys as well. Okay. We can come out of the shell now. Let's clear the screen. Now quickly create a custom uh, directory. I mean, we, uh, we need to make sure that all these things stays in the same one place. I'm gonna quickly create a directory called VPN cert. I'm gonna copy all these uh, file to this folder so that they can stay at one place and I can easily upload them to the uh, ACM or the AWS certificate manager later. So this is basically I'm copying these files. So I'm copying all the server certificates of client server keys, client certificate, client keys. And it's done now. So if I just, I mean, now what we have done, we have created the certificates. Now it's time when we upload the certificates to the AWS Management Console. So let's go back to the Management Console to upload these certificates. And we, before we move to the certificate, uh, I mean, AWS Console, I would like to, to show you where this all these things are. If you go here and you go to the VPN folder. So this is my VPN cert folder. And all the CA cert, client one domain, client one domain TLD. This is my client certificate, client key, server certificate, server key. So now we're gonna import all these into my management console so that from there client VPN endpoint can refer to them. So here we are in our AWS management console. Let's go to the certificate manager. And here you'll find import certificate, click on import certificate. And here you need to paste the certificate body, private key, and the you can also use AWS CLI to push these uh, certificates into the ACM. But I wanted to show you the 
uh, UI part of it. So open that folder where certificates are. Let's start with your CA cert. Open with the text editor. So I'm gonna open with the notepad. So this is my server certificate. I'm gonna copy the whole thing and I'm gonna paste it into the certificate chain and I'm gonna open my server certificate again with the notepad and I'm gonna select copy and paste this as well this goes into my certificate body now let's go back to the same folder open the server key as well here is the server key I'm gonna select copy take it to the private key and paste it and click on next I don't want to add a tag right now or maybe we can add a I'll call it name server certificate and then next and import similarly you can import the client certificate as well although it is not mandatory if you have the same ca who has issued your client and server certificate but for the com complete uh, demonstration we'll do that as well so just click on here i click on import certificate again let's now let's do it for the client certificate so this is my client certificate open it just copy paste this is that certificate body now I need the key again open with notepad copy the key paste it here go back into the CA certificate open with a notepad and paste it into the also it's an optional but it's uh, good to to the complete step click on next I'm adding a tag here calling it client cert next and import so now we are ready with the certificates we are ready with our subnets as well as our EC2 instance so now it is time to create our client VPN endpoint so let's go and do that so again for to create that you need to go to your VPC services once you are in there just scroll down a little bit and you will see under virtual private network you will find client VPN endpoints so click on client VPN endpoints there's nothing so click on one there is one thing which you need to remember that your client endpoint and the certificate which we installed they should be in the same region i just forgot to mention that let's go back if you click on certificate manager make sure that they are into the same region and otherwise they will not be available when you start creating your vpn endpoint so just uh, be aware of it right so go back and vpc again to client vpn so here you'll find client vpn endpoints currently we don't have anything just we saw that now click on create a vpn endpoint so give it a name here let's call it client vpn ep01 if you want you want you can give a description from where to where let's, you can put it here now this is where we spoke about that client ip uh, version 4 CID from this range your client would be receiving the ips once they gets connected to the vpn session over there now this is one thing you need to understand that this range cannot be larger than 12 or smaller than 22 so make it make sure that this stays somewhere in, in between so i'm gonna what i'm gonna use i'm gonna use 192.168.0.0 slash 16. there's another another thing which you need to uh, be aware of uh, here that this range should have approximate double of the ips which you ex 
which the I mean the to the number of clients which you expected to concurrently connect. Let's say you expect that there will be 2000 end users or the concurrent connections to your client VPN endpoint your IP range should be able to cater to 4000 IPs at least because of the high availability clause which we have here so please uh, be aware of it now the comes the authentication part if you remember from the presentation we have authentication which is based on user or based on certificate so if because in this demonstration we are going to use mutual authentication so we need to select that certificate so this is basically my server client certificate here i need to select the server certificate right so i have selected the server certificate i'm going to use mutual authentication client certificate you can pick that client one right so this is my client certificate now either you can also enable connection logging if you want to enable uh, or you want to collect log details on the client connections you can also have something called connect handler you can configure a lambda to authorize your client connections other than that you have optional parameters like you can use dns servers you can use your transfer protocol in this uh, scenario as i said your vpn endpoint works on TCP and UDP both. It is good to have UDP because of it will have better performance during the VPN endpoints, but you can also select TCP as well. Now there's one thing which is very important, enabling the split tunnel. So if you do not enable split tunnel, all the traffic from your clients will move through the VPN endpoint. So all the traffic, whether they are going to AWS or not, whether they are browsing something, the all the traffic will be pushed through the client VPN endpoint once the VPN endpoint gets configured and connected. So it's a good idea to, enab to enable the split tunnel. So what happens? Only the traffic which is required to go to AWS or based on the route table which we spoke about earlier, which your client will have. Your client will have that specific route table which will tell, okay, which traffic needs to move to the uh, AWS client VPN endpoint and which traffic need, does not need to traverse through the same endpoint. So this is basically we can increase or you can uh, do the cost optimization as, as well as because your VPN endpoint has a cost factor of how much traffic passes through it. So you can basically segregating the traffic which is new, which needs to go to AWS that will move through VPN endpoint tunnel and the other traffic will move will not move towards it. So basically I'm enabling the split, tun uh, split tunneling here. Now select your VPC. This is the VPC which we created. So client VPN dem uh, we're going to do that. Now I'm I'm gonna pick the default VPC as of now. So what happens? You have options to pick customized uh, security groups as well. You will see the list of all security groups which are available in that uh, VPC. I'm currently going with the default VPC. So uh, default VPC, and here this is the place where you pick your uh, port numbers. Whether you want go for four four three or one one nine four, you can pick here. So other than that, you can also enable self-service portal. The self-service portal will basically kind of a, a website which will allow your end users to download the client configuration as well as the VPN client. But it is only applicable when you are using user-based uh, authentication, not with the certificate-based auth authentication. Although I'm going to enable it, but this is not going to work with the mutual authentication which we're going to use here. Here you can uh, limit your timeout hours. You can move 12, 10, 8. I'm going to pick at 8 hours. I want so that after eight hours the session should time out and here if you want you you can enable a client login banner as well which tells you okay what is uh, i mean you can put any kind of a messaging for the client which you can do that let's say uh once vpn gets connected i should my user should see welcome to the b cloud guru academy something similar i mean this is uh, uh you can decide you can customize it you can use up to 1400 characters so once you are done with all these configuration part click create client VPN endpoint. So it's going to take some time and initially it will stay in pending associate state and you understand why because once you create the client VPN endpoint you need to associate a target network. So once it is done let's go select the client VPN endpoint. Now if you look at it here in the details uh, section below, you'll see details, target network association, your security groups, your authorization rules, your route tables, connections, etc. So basically here you will see every detail of your client VPN endpoint, including your self-service portal UL, which is here. Now you need to associate a target network. So click on associate target network, select your VPC. This is my VPC and then pick your subnet. So this is the 
uh, subnet where I am running my virtual machine. I'm gonna pick the subnet 01. Now uh, you must be wondering can we have workloads in subnet 01 as well. Yes you can have sub, uh, workloads in subnet 01 as well but just to show you that it is not necessary that you need to uh, I mean keep the all the workloads here. I have demonstrated with the another, another subnet as well. So we have kept our VM here. So this is going to be our target subnet which we're gonna associate. So click on associate target network. So it's gonna take some time. So once it is done, this will uh, this state will change. Now you remember the drill when we uh, were talking about the demo flow. So after target network association, we need to do the authorization part of it. So authentication we have done with the help of certificate. Now the authorization you need to need an authorization rule here. By default, everyone is denied. So pick your destination network. Now the, from where you get the destination network. Go back to your VPC, right? Now your VPCs, which we just created. This was my VPC, and this is my IP version CID range 10.1.0.0/16. The same range we need to specify over there as a destination network. Click on VPN endpoints and go to your authorization rule. So what we are saying that resources at this destination network should be allowed for the group of users which you are going to specify here. So my CIDR for my VPC was 10.1.0.0 16. That was my VPC CIDR. I am going to put in the same range because I want the whole VPC should be accessible. Either you can use specific access groups. Basically you would require the access group IDs from your directory if you are using it active directory or you are using some other access group uh, provisioning here but we are here we are allowing access to all users because we are not using user based authentication here here you can put some description if you want to i'm going to add that authorization rule now my client vpn endpoint is still in uh, pending associate uh, state so it's going to take some time before this target networks get associated and if you look at the route table it is still creating the route so once the routes get created they would be propagated through client VPN endpoint to the clients which is connecting to the AWS through that VPN. So let's wait for some time and then we'll come back again. Now you can see this uh, client VPN endpoint is available. If you go to the target network association, it is also associated and my authorization rules should be active and the route table should be active. Once this is done, we can we need to download this client configuration. Basically, this is a task of your administrator who is going to download this client configuration, prepare it and distribute to your clients. Okay, so let's download this and see how we can configure it on the client part of it. So click on download. So download client configuration. So this is the client configuration if I just want to open it. Look at it here. So I'm going to open it with the help of a text editor. Once you open it, you need to do certain tweaks to it, and that tweaks are you need to basically add two tags into it. <clears throat> so you need to add cert and key. This is the place where you're gonna add your client to certificate and the key, right? So let's find that client certificate which we had. So these are my client certificate. So I'm gonna copy this client certificate. I'm gonna go there, add it between these uh, two tags. So I'm gonna copy paste it here, right? Just give it. Now I'll get the content of the key set. Here is my client key. I'm gonna copy and paste it here. Right? And make sure there are no extra spaces and formatting is correct. Just save the file. So this is my file, client config one. I'm gonna close it, minimize it. Now there's one thing which you need to remember. Okay, let me go back and you know open that file again. So if I just open it with the help of a notepad, 
you will see in the documentation part there are the AWS documentation is asking you to add certain random string here I believe that does not work uh, the way they are showing it in the document so you have to be careful because that random string if you add it the connection goes into a kind of an infinite loop and they don't it is not able to resolve the host name so do not change anything here based on the AWS documentation as of now I'll let you know if there is a change over there so basically no need to add those random strings here maybe for the earlier operating systems windows 10 or uh, the other operating system you might you might want to change this but for windows 11 there is no uh, need to change this one please be aware of that now let's go back and we have downloaded this client configuration we have done the required changes by adding those uh, client certificate and the keys now the other thing you need to download the VPN client based on the operating system which you have here Mac OS download from here if your Windows from here and Linux from here so I have already downloaded this uh, software from here and if you go click on this one so you, now this installation has to be done on the end user part the client configuration file your admin will prepare and give it to you but this one something which you need to run on client setup wizard on the end user part so basically it's a next 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 I have already done it so it will ask me to repair or remove but for you this is you just click on next next that it will get installed so once it gets installed you can open it right so once you open it it will ask you to create a profile so I have opened this one which is already connected so if you see here so this is uh, once it is done you will see this AWS VPN client you can open it and from file you can go to manage profiles and you can add a profile while adding the profile give it a name I'll say new VPN new VPN 2023 now the VPN configuration file is something which you saw for earlier which we your administrator has prepared and kept ready for you or have uh, given to you pick that file click open add profile once that is done this VPN client you need to pick the profile which you want to connect so in this case this is new VPN 2023 click on connect so if you want you can go and show details here it will tell you what's the status of your profile so if you see we got connected we we got that uh, message which we configured as a banner so it says welcome to the big cloud guru academy i'm clicking in ok and see this started working now if we go back here we will not stop here we'll go back here we'll go to our ec2 and see what are the ip address which we have so click here and you might have noticed we did not have a public IP for this uh, target server which we created see there's no public IP and this is my private IP that is 10.1.3.99 I'm gonna RDP to, RDP to this server from here so I'll open the RDP client here just gonna minimize it maybe this you can see here so this is my IP address of my remote server which is on AWS platform I'm gonna click on connect voila it got connected so administrator basically you go here there's one more thing before we go and do this we need to get the credentials let's go back and click on connect and go to RDP client this is my username you need to get the password upload your private key here so this is my private key I'm gonna upload it decrypt the password and copy the password now go back to the RDP client so this is my username administrator put your password here you can say remember me click on ok 
so if everything is correct then it will be able to connect so now you can see this has been connected you can see guys i'm able to connect to that specific vm on the aws side so this is how your client vpn endpoint works so let's let it come up now let's go back to the powerpoint and understand what are the limitations and the rules which we have or the considerations now let's quickly talk about the limitations and the considerations the first limitation would be it the limit of 10 mbps bandwidth per user connection so you, every user will have this 10 mbps uh, bandwidth limitations your client cidr uh, i mean this is uh, something which is quite common with all the vpc constructs so vpc cidr and the client cidr should be different it cannot overlap uh, your cidr range must have a block size of at least 22 or should not be greater than 12 as i said you need to assign twice the range of the IP address which you are required to get connected and your client CDID range cannot be changed after the client VPN endpoint gets created very important point to remember so plan accordingly before you start configuring things you cannot associate multiple subnets from the same availability zone you can associate multiple subnets but they are they're supposed to belong to different availability zones your client VPN will support IP version traffic 4 only at this point of time. No IP version 6. There is a workaround to prevent IP version 6 leak, which is there in the uh, documentation. Then your client VPN is not FIPS compliant. It is not Federal Information Processing Standards compliant. We need to remember that as well. Self service portal is not available for the clients which authenticate using mutual authentication. And very important. IP forwarding is currently disabled it is not allowed and you cannot establish a VPN connection from computer if multiple users are logged into the same operating system very very important point to remember so that's it guys for the client VPN endpoint although it's got a bit lengthy but I hope you will learn with the proper structure here and you will enjoy this uh, video thanks for watching guys thank you